Hi, I'm Scott from Off Grid with Whiskey and Sunshine. A lot of you folks saw our earlier video about why we chose our Kubota L2501 gear drive tractor. Well, I think when we made that video, we probably had the tractor three or four months, maybe a little longer, maybe six months. Uh, now it's been over three years. So it's actually been a long time since we made that first video. So we thought we'd revisit all the things that we like about this tractor, all the things that we don't. Maybe some stuff that Kubota could get a little better. A little, little things. Three years is a long time. The machine is, uh, let's see, I've serviced it at least twice and it's due for another big servicing. So the thing gets used. We're gonna give you some close up shots and show you. Our tractor isn't a, a hobby machine. We couldn't live here in the location that we do without it. It lives outdoors. It gets all the maintenance that it's supposed to get, but it also gets used fairly hard too. So come along and we'll take a look at some of the things that turned out to be right and maybe some that turned out to be wrong with the Kubota L2501 DT. So first let's talk about some of the stuff that uh, we added on to this machine. Some of the things we did to it to make it our own. The folks down at Wallingford Equipment in Auburn were nice enough to add that weld on hook in the middle of the, of the bucket. I think all tractors should have that. It's kind of a necessity. Works really good for all kinds of things. I also added these two chains. I drilled two holes, one on each side of the bucket, added a shackle to each side and some light chain and a hook. That works really good when you're trying to lift something that won't fit in your bucket because they, you, with the two chains, you can loop it out around. As long as you can get your bucket underneath it and tip it back, you can load a lot of stuff or unload a lot of stuff by just using your bucket, even if you don't have a set of forks. So that's what I use those chains for. These are all things that I did on our old tractor too. So they were ideas that I had before. As you can see, when I say this tractor gets used, we've got the obvious exhaust stains. Um, you can see the machine gets greased. As there's a lot of grease coming out around the fittings and out around all the joints. I try to grease the machine about every 10 hours use, just like the manual says. But there are times when I run this thing for five hours when it gets 10 hours worth of use. So you kind of have to use your best judgment on whether it should be greased. Never let them go dry. Unless it's something with a seal, over greasing it isn't gonna hurt. These pins, you can grease them to your heart's content. Yeah, I added this saw haul so I can have a chainsaw on the tractor all the time. Right now I got this little homeowner steel on there. Uh, the saw haul has been a really great rig, nice addition to the tractor. It keeps me from carrying the saw in the bucket. I don't have to worry about running over it because I don't know where it is. So that was a good thing. As you can see, the, uh, the floorboards, the paint is wearing off from the floorboards where getting on and off the tractor and running the machine, which is just, it's just normal wear, just normal wear and tear. I guess if Kubota really wanted to be uh, fancy about it, they could have some plastic mats like they do on their B or their M series tractors. They don't, I don't care. Like I said, we didn't buy this thing as a showpiece. It gets used. I can put paint on that. I can put floor mats on it later. Uh, typical analog dash. There's nothing electronic. There's no, uh, no digital stuff at all. It's Everything is fine, you know, as far as mechanical, a tachometer runs on a cable. And I know the tachometer runs on a cable because that's the only thing that I've had to have worked on in this machine in three years. The only time the dealership has touched it, they came and put a tack cable on it because the tack cable broke. They did it under warranty. They came here to do it and they didn't charge us a nickel. Didn't have to sign any paperwork, nothing. Thank you very much, down the road. Obviously, everybody likes our chains. I run these big diamond ice chains on it all year round. Uh, people want to know why I don't take them off in the summertime. Well, I like traction. A lot of times this tractor's in the woods hauling out firewood, and I like to be able to have that extra level of traction. This tractor doesn't see any pavement except down at the end of our road, where our road meets the main road. So most of its life, it's on gravel. So I'm really not hurting anything by leaving the chains on it all year long. Now these, 
These tires are the R1s. These are the, they're called agricultural tires. And they're actually different wheels too. The front and the rear are both taller and skinnier than the, uh, the R4 style wheels and tires that come with it. I have these wheels set to the very outside setting so the wheels are as far out as they will go. I Meaning the tractor is as wide as it's ever gonna be. You could take this wheel and put it on the other side and take that wheel from over there and bring it over here and you can narrow up your tractor stance by probably close to six inches, but I wanted it wide. This is why I wanted the tractor. I wanted to be able to get around in the woods on steep ground. We got a lot of hills here and uh, that's the way I wanted it. I had the tires filled with uh, the Kubota calcium substitute. I can't remember what it's called right now. I had that done at the dealer. They also had the roof put on at the dealer. And if you look really close up on the left side, you'll see a place where the roof actually broke. More our fault than the roof's fault. You know, when you're running stuff and it's well below zero and the roof is made of plastic, a tree branch doesn't take much to break a piece of plastic if it's 30, you know, I don't know. If it's below zero, things get brittle. So that's how that happened. Uh, we also added some extra lighting two lights facing forward and one facing backward on top of the rest of the tractor lights. Uh, those provide a wicked lot of light for the times when we have to plow snow after dark. And it always seems like that happens more often than not. Snow always comes at the worst possible time. And uh, not everybody has the next day to clean it up. It has to be done at night sometimes. So that's just the way it is. Okay, we've been happy with the roof so far. Hasn't caused any other trouble. Uh, we also bought this box, the storage box for the back of it from Amazon. That will fit on any tractor that has a ropes canopy. It's very adjustable. They're quite expensive. In the long run, I probably could have built something, saved myself a lot of money, but that box works really good, and I'm happy with it, and I'm not sad in the slightest bit that I added it to my tractor. The only time I don't like it is when I'm backing up to hook onto something with the quick hitch, because it limits my visibility. Speaking of quick hitches, as you can see, I've got an old Mahendra quick hitch mounted on here that I use a lot for when we take the rake on and off and things like that. We don't use our PTO much. Mostly, all I have to worry about is just the three points. And it works, that works really good. A friend of mine had a Mahendra and he had the quick hitch and he wasn't using it, so it was quite cheap. It's worked out pretty well. Someday I'll paint it orange. It'll match the rest of the track. Okay. okay, on this side, you can see one other thing we've done is we added a handle, a grab handle to the right hand fender of the tractor. They don't come with them. I don't know why. It's all drilled for it. They were little orange stickers over the holes. We just went and ordered the handle right from our dealer. Um, I can't remember. I think it might have been like 40 bucks for the handle and all the hardware. And, uh, you know, maybe that's a little pricey, but it's money well spent. I'm glad it's there, and I'm glad we did that, too. Tractor gets plenty of grease. All of the grease points are oozing with grease. That's something I can't emphasize enough. Nobody wants a loose loader. Find your grease fittings and keep them greased. Now, I absolutely love the quick hitch front bucket. I can take the bucket off and put the snow pusher on in less than five minutes. Very, very, very efficient, very quick. You almost don't have to get off the tractor except to throw the throw the locks to lock the implement in place. So I'm very happy with that. For the most part, I'm very happy about the whole tractor. There are only a very few things, like I said, that I might change. If I were Kubota, I might spend the extra money and put a better more uh, robust steering wheel on the machine. Because the steering wheel is, is plastic and it does feel very cheap. It's, it's comfortable, it's easy to use. We did put a spinner, a steering wheel spinner knob on it. It's not a, it wouldn't stop me from buying the tractor, but it, it would just be nice if they had more of a, you know, substantial, maybe rubber coated steering wheel would be nice. So that, it not coming with the handle, not having any floor mats at all, which is no big deal, really. It's only a piece of equipment. Really don't have anything bad to say about it. I'd like to dispel some of the rumors. A lot of people say that these gear-driven tractors don't work good for doing loader work, and I, I have to disagree with that, I, and I'll tell you why. Basically, we bought this tractor 
for the loader and for the lift in the back on the three-point hitch. We don't use the PTO very much. A lot of people complain because it's not a true live PTO. When you step on the clutch, the PTO stops along with the tractor. When you let out, it starts back up. Really not a problem if you know how to use it. But even that being said, the gear drive tractor to me, it, it's easier to service. You've got one less filter. If I have to put a clutch in this, I can do it myself. I realize a lot of other people can't, I can. And even I think if you had a dealership do it, it would probably would still be cheaper than dig it into your hydrostatic transmission. I don't have anything against hydrostatic transmissions. I have friends that have them. This just works the best for me. If I was gonna be digging out rocks and stumps all the time, I think that's where a hydrostatic machine would really shine because you don't have to worry about you know wearing out your clutch over and over again trying to dig and lift. I can understand it, but that would be a big plus. Plowing this quarter mile long driveway, I would have to have my foot on at least one pedal all the time just to make the tractor move. I don't have that problem with this. I can set the hand throttle with the tractor in gear and I can have the plow down and grow from one end of my driveway all the way to the other and never touch the clutch until I want to turn around and go the other direction. So I don't need to purchase a cruise control. That was another thing. Um, a lot of people want to know why we didn't buy the 3301 or the 3901. I personally don't care much for the electronics involved and the, the tier four diesels that have the regen. Uh, they don't have def fluid like a big machine, but even still, it has to go through that burn cycle to burn out that stuff that's in your exhaust. And some people have good luck with that and some don't. And if it doesn't work for you, I, th I think if it fails a certain number of times, it goes into limp mode and you may or may not have to hire a tech to come out and force your tractor to do a regen with a laptop or an iPad or something. Not for me. I would rather just have the tractor always run and not worry about it. So that's why we went with the 2501. So those are the reasons, again, briefly, why we bought the tractor we bought. Uh, those are all the things that we like about it and we don't like about it. Like I said, it's a very simple tractor. When we started out, we had an old Kubota from the 80s, early 80s. It was a L235DT. Basically, it was the same machine, except this has power steering, which I love. And the other machine had a few more gear selections. It was a true shuttle. Other than fourth gear, you had a reverse for every gear you have forward. This one splits it. So you have half as many reverse gears as you have forward gears, but it still gives you a wide enough option so that you're not waiting all day for your machine to back up. So it's actually in some ways it's better. This has been the exact machine that I wanted to buy. It's tough. It always starts even here during these main winters. I had them put a block heater in it. I haven't had to use it yet. And uh, in three years, that's, that's pretty good. It always fires right up. Sometimes it doesn't like it, but uh, I don't do anything special to the fuel. Here in New England, they uh, sell what they call winter mix in the winter time. I think there might be a little kerosene in it. I'm not sure, but uh, the, the fuel is thinner right out of the pump. Better for winter, has different additives, anti-gelling additives. I also, uh, in every tank of fuel or every five gallon can that I buy, that I keep on hand. I put a shot of um, power service, the white bottle in it. It's a fuel stabilizer and conditioner, and it's anti-gelling in the winter time. So I always keep a shot of that in it. Um, pretty simple, really. Use the fluids your dealer recommends. You know, buy the, buy the right oil, buy Kubota filters. Kubota filters are way better than even the best auto parts store filters. If you don't believe me, buy one or look at one that somebody else has taken off. You'll see the difference and you'll feel the difference. As long as you uh, keep the, the right fluids in the machine and as long as you keep the right filters on the machine and you do your part, it is my belief that this machine is gonna be just like 
the first one we have and go for at least 20 years. I haven't seen anything yet that would prove otherwise. It's very stable, very solid, very dependable, very simple to run, very simple to service. So that being said, I hope you've enjoyed our part two review, three years down the road of the Kubota L2501 DT.